with the NHL trade deadline, you know, NFL free agency kicking off, uh, the MLB sort of weird free agency starting because of the lockout uh, picking up, well, ending rather. Yeah. Uh, but I, I feel like this week we, we kind of hit back to a normal sort of, uh, well, whatever normal that we can get in Seattle sports. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just kind of general updates on some of the games that were played this week. Yeah. So. Not a lot of big, juicy that's okay. rumors or anything. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's good to not have to deal with it all the time. So with that being said, we'll jump right into our Seattle Seahawks. Yeah. So we do have just a couple of notes here in regards to the Seahawks. Um, Pete Carroll apparently did make a attempt to keep Russell Wilson. He did fight for him to stay in Seattle, but once he realized that it wasn't meaningful anymore to stick with that mindset, he moved on from that. And of course we know what happened after that. So, I mean, I don't know that I have very many thoughts on this. Of course, some people say that he, you could tell that there wasn't such a connection towards the end there. So any any thoughts from you? Um, I mean, if he's a smart man, it would make sense for him to fight for his yeah, quarterback, yeah. right? Especially a guy that you know is established and a franchise guy. Uh, but I mean, just the comments that were, I think we talked about it in the weeks past, right? Mm -hmm. With the, well, especially since the trade, you know, this idea of after every season declaring, you know, going into like where we're at right now, heading into the draft, we need to run the ball more. We need to run the ball more. And obviously, if Russell feels a different way, I mean, it makes sense. It would make sense that he's like, hey, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you I want you to stay, but if you leave, it's not the end of my world, you know, because he's yeah. still going to have a coaching job, obviously, like he is now. You're, you've, I'm sure you've got some sort of uh, shorter version of a leash. I'm sure it's like, hey, mm -hmm. you know, because of the history you have and because, you know, what you've done for this franchise, we're going to let you figure this out. But if you're not able to figure that out in these next few years or by the time your contract hits its end, I mean, I think it's safe to say, hey, happy retirement. Because I don't think he goes anywhere else after his uh, contract really? ends. Okay. He's, he's what? How old is? <laughs> I don't remember off the top of my head how old he is. But as far as I remember, his contract ends in 25 uh, age. He's 70. I mean, oh, so okay. do you see him playing? In, no. He's already like the oldest coach in the NFL. So... I don't I don't think he goes anywhere after this. So I, I feel like he's got a short leash, but also like I understand if he he fought to keep him, but I don't think he was like like Russell, please, I need you. He's <laughs> yeah. like, Oh, you know, we want you around here, this, this, and that. But it's not like I think he like put it all on the table, you know. And you, do you think he's still like stuck to his guns then as far as the coaching the position that he was taking on the coaching about running the ball? I th oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, in other news, he is also involving Geno Smith in the quarterback competition. So head coach Pete Carroll says the team wants to keep Geno Smith and have him involved in that starting role competition for the starting role. So what that would look like right now is Drew Locke and Geno Smith. And if things go Chuck's way in the draft, maybe Malik Willis. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, I mean, I would get wanting to have Geno because he's been in the system, right? And he knows... The, the the franchise and is familiar with the personnel and all that. And it could be his best bet to start, right? Because mm -hmm. Drew Locke, I mean, he's still relatively young. He's like, what, 24, 25? So it's not horrible, right? Yeah. And I'm, I don't think, I think you have those two battle it out if you're going to stick with that route. I don't think you're trading for anyone. I don't really see it. No. Um, but also I'm not 100% sure about if the team's going to draft anybody. Because I've seen conflicting reports. I've seen that the team, you know, well, I know that um, there are, have been Seattle personnel at different quarterback pro days. Like today's, uh, someone from Seattle was at uh, UNC's pro day for Sam Howell. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know if Seattle's in love with any of these guys necessarily. I've seen conflicting reports. So, I mean, if we're sticking at it, I know DK Metcalf defended Drew Locke. He was he like, did. oh, that's, that's the guy, you know, and he said, you know, enough with the Drew Locke slander. Yeah. So we'll see. But, you know, I think Gino, having Gino back at least on the roster gives you a safe option, safe as safe as you can get, right? Yeah. Um, with Someone somebody who's familiar. who's familiar with the system and already knows, you know, who we're looking at. But obviously, it compared to what we've had, it makes your offense a lot, more, a lot less dangerous. Yeah. And also last week, Bobby Wagner – had a visit with the LA Rams who expressed interest in having him maybe sign them with the team. Um, 
was going to wait until a little later here, but I'll just mention it now. Um, they opted to – they will not be pursuing him anymore because Wagner is seeking a one-year $11 million deal, but the Rams do not want to meet that asking price. So um, – why would why do you think the reasoning for the Rams is? I mean, Wagner is a seasoned veteran, but I, in my opinion, I think he's worth that one year, eleven million. Well, because of how uh, how their cap is totally destroyed, you know, yeah. they sign. They already have you know Aaron Donald, Matthew. You give Matthew Stafford a big extension. What last week or the other week? Right. Um, you just signed Allen Robinson to a three year, like forty five million dollar deal. The, they're already pretty strapped. I don't know if they're going to be able to bring back Odell Beckham Jr. Like they've tried to express that they want to. They traded Robert Woods, which I, I get you've got Cooper. Well, Cooper Cup too. I mean, mm -hmm. he's going to oh, want true. money too. Yes. You know, so they're already in their position. So they're probably like, hey, we want you. But we are not. Gonna Here's give the $3 you that. we have. Can you come and join us? <laughs> yeah. You know, so I mean, it's for the best. You know, no, no Bobby Wagner in LA, please. <gasps> oh, if it was with the other LA team, the Chargers, that would, I don't think they need a linebacker. <laughs> the Chargers, I, I, I'm okay with the Chargers. Anyway, um, but that's that's probably it. I think they're just strapped, and they, they're like, you want this, we can give you much, much less, and we'd like you to join, but we, we cannot Hoping meet your spot. Hoping that he join just because they might be a contending team. Yeah. And knowing that Bobby is his own agent, you know, they yeah. might try to pull pull a fast one on him or something, but he, he sees his worth, you know. Good for him. On March 24th, the Seahawks signed a corner that would be Justin Coleman to a one-year deal. This is his second stint with Seattle. He spent the 2017-2018 season with the Hawks and is excited for homecoming. Yeah, I think this is, this makes I, I think might might close the door on any hope for a Kevin King yes, signing. Yes, definitely. Um, Coleman Coleman's a good pickup. He was a guy that really hadn't done much before he came to Seattle. I know he was uh, spent some time with the Patriots before coming here and got a big payday when he left Seattle when he uh, went and joined Detroit. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's a solid pickup. He was a guy that really showed out in the in the slot corner role. Had two pick sixes, I think, in the 2018 season. One of them jumping into the uh, Salvation Army bucket down at uh, Jerry's World in Dallas uh, when they beat Dallas. Um, <laughs> I think it's a good pickup, but it also it's it's interesting to see now how you've molded your cornerbacks. You're gonna have uh, Trey Brown. I love Trey Brown. You know, that's that's you know get him healthy. But you got Artie Burns and Justin Coleman. You kind of got like an under. It's it's DJ Reed might have like opened Pete Carroll's eyes to shorter cornerbacks. Yeah, you know, um, and I think you keep Trey Brown in the system. Good, the guy that already showed out a bit, but you know having Artie Burns, who's like five. He's not that tall. Um, you're hoping on skill on these guys, and they have skill, you know, and familiarity. So I'm interested to see because unless I miss, oh, Sidney Jones too, Sidney Jones. So I think they'll have some depth there. And if you want to, I mean, in a league that is really passing heavy, and especially with you're playing the AFC West, right? The Chiefs, the Raiders, the Raiders, the, you know, the Broncos, <laughs> and your former quarterback, and help me out here, I'm missing somebody. The Chargers, especially. You're going to play a division that's really pass heavy, and your own division, uh, Jimmy Garoppolo. You know the Rams, right? You're playing the Rams. You when you build a roster, you're building to compete against your division. They're not really good at building to compete against Aaron Donald, as you can see. I don't think anybody is. No. <laughs> to be fair, yeah. <laughs> um, but you're going to be playing the Rams, who are going to want to pass the ball, right? The Cardinals, with Kyler Murray. You're going to want to pass the ball. I don't speak on San Francisco as much because Jimmy Garoppolo is Jimmy Garoppolo. Um, Who so, is maybe not even going to be their quarterback next season. I, I so. saw something today, too, that said that I guess uh, John Lynch was like, oh, we're not. he's too talented of a player. So, oh, okay. hey, keep him keep him there, sure. But So I, I, I think it's a good signing, but I'm intrigued to see how this how the ro the depth chart sorts itself out, right? Who's gonna Who you're going to be your left and your right corners who's going to fit in that slot. Cause you already had guys in the secondary that were competing to be your slot with Ugo Amadi, Marquise Blair. So what do they just become backup safeties? You lose those guys in other nickel packages. Uh, it's good. It's, it's and one of these good problems to have, I guess, when you got all this talent and you got to figure out how to use it. Yeah. And figure out where to use them. And hopefully they figure out how to do that. But 
we ha going back to some Russell Wilson news as well. KJ Wright did speak on that and he said that he wasn't surprised and you could tell that he and P Pete Carroll weren't seeing eye to eye anymore. So if outside sources were also seeing that, then yeah, former think, team, yeah. former guys that were with the team for a long time, I'm sure they know a lot more than they'll say, mm -hmm. but I, it, it makes sense. Yeah, for sure. Um, Pete Carroll also spoke on DK Metcalf states that they will do whatever they, whatever it takes to extend his contract. So that's good news. We don't want to see him go anywhere. Um, and DK with the loss of Russell Wilson and Bobby Wagner, he understands the role that he needs to take now as a leader and it sounds like he's up for the challenge. I mean, I'm intrigued by this because I've seen like, especially, um, after like the green Bay thing where he was ejected in that game. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, a diva receiver, you know, typical receivers are, you know, divas, all that kind of thing. Um, I think you can kind of tell with the trade of Russell Wilson and the release of Bobby Wagner, it kind of, it maybe sobered him up a little bit. Not to say he wasn't, but you kind of wake, like a wake up call and it's like, hey, I, someone's got to fill the leadership role. Is yeah. it going to be a true lock? Probably not. Who else on that offense is going to take that role? Chris Carson doesn't seem like a guy that's had, uh, has spoken. There's not really anybody that I can see that would take that role. So I guess it makes sense, right? Someone's got to step up and be that voice. You know, on the defensive side of the ball, Jamal Adams, Quandre Diggs, you know, you got some candidates there. But on the offense, tell me, who's who who's taking be? that role? Yeah. Um, so it'll also be interesting. I know he didn't mention it, but who's going to wear the captaincy on the offensive side of the ball? I think that would be him, honestly. I, um, I don't doubt it. You yeah. Know? So I... I think it's really cool because I know there are people, oh, he's a diva. He needs to be out. I think that's harsh. Uh, that's a bunch of baloney. And, it's and going off of that, I don't know if you did watch the interview that he had with Taylor Rooks where he mentioned that he was going through some mental health things last season. And um, I think I recently saw a tweet where he said that therapy shouldn't be um, received in a negative yeah, way or yeah. Yeah, something like that. So uh, it sounds like he's working through some things. And if that helps him on the field, then great. Um, so of course we don't know what he could have been going through mentally last season, but yeah, I think he's ready to take on that leadership role. So it'll be exciting to see him do that. Um, that's about it for our Seahawks related news here, but we do have league related news. Uh, Al Michaels will be joining Amazon's Thursday night football crew. He is leaving NBC and again, joining the Amazon TNF crew on a huge 75 million deal. Crazy. Give me that broadcast <laughs> money. Yeah. $75 that's, million. That's, dollars. that's insane. That's a good bag right there. <laughs> that is insane. Speaking of good bags. <laughs> yes. Um, on the 23rd, Casey traded Tyree Kill to the Miami Dolphins, a five-year, $120 million deal. That made Tyreek, I believe, the highest paying wide receiver. It's got to be pretty close. Yeah, because I think Devontae held that for the week that he was traded. <laughs> um, and then Tyreek came and took that took that title from him. Um, they also signed Armstead to a five-year, $87.5 million contract. So Miami is uh, gearing up for a run here. Yeah, Tyreek is the highest paid. $30 million a year. Mm -hmm. God. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and then this, I, I, it kind of ties into Seattle, right? Because everyone's like, oh, Devontae Adams got traded. Tyreek Hill got traded. Oh, is DK going to get traded next? And Bell's, Bell's poked me. About I'm, it. I am pitching DK to Green Bay. You can <laughs> I'm going pitch yourself forward. off the studio. <laughs> no. Um, so I know there's, well, and also an interesting comment was made. You know, I don't know where they're at right now, but John Schneider and Pete Carroll are, you know, they're, with a bunch of other general managers and someone asked Schneider about the the wide receiver market and all that and he he said he he didn't really sound too committal on giving him a big extension so uh, that mm -hmm. like you add that and you add what we just talked about with the leadership role i just i, I think he wants I'm, I'm pretty sure he wants to be here okay but you know also just like in anything else if you're going to be somewhere, you want to be compensated fairly, mm -hmm. right? So I wonder how that situation plays out. I know Pete Carroll said they want to get him extended, um, but I, I'm interested to see where the final numbers add up and and or how that situation plays itself out. Because yeah. that's, you know, I love Tyler Lockett, but this is your guy that, you know, for the future and beyond, you know, unless Noah Fant, I, I, I like Noah Fant, but, you know, with the current guys we have, you know, and not necessarily the newer pickups, He's, he's kind of your your face, yes. right? So 
I would keep him happy as opposed to other players who are recently departed. I agree. Um, unfortunately, it always, doesn't always play out that way because Green Bay desperately wanted to keep Devontae and we saw how that turned out. So um, hopefully they are able to secure Metcalf on that extension. Um, we don't, again, him trying to take that leader role and probably being captain, we don't want to see somebody else of face that everybody here loves leave. So um, hopefully that does happen for him. On the 24th, Deshaun Watson was cleared of criminal charges. The second grand jury declined to indict him on an outstanding complaint. And this was, I believe this was a second complaint, right? Yeah. And so no indictment on that. Um, I'm sure we'll hear more about Deshaun Watson in the weeks to follow. On March 28th, the Lions will be featured on, or it was announced that the Lions will, would be featured on NFL Hard Knocks. Um, Detroit is also hosting the 2024 NFL Draft. The NFL announced that Detroit was chosen over Green Bay and Washington, D.C., um, the NFL also created a new diversity committee the, to review its hiring policies in light of ongoing criticism. So a response to the lawsuit, it sounds like? E, I'm sure it is. I'm sure that that was a... Because the league has always had its stopgaps. So it was like, oh, we're, we're going to have the Rooney rule and all that. But it's like, you, again, you can see guys who are a lot less qualified you know, obviously there are guys who are getting hired, but just just for example, with the Texans interviewing Josh McCown for their head coach, I'm like, Josh McCown is cool, journeyman guy, great, but what coaching experience are you mm -hmm. bringing here? You know, that that's a little ridiculous to me. You know, and obviously, you know, there's a talks with Eric Bieniemy with the Chiefs. Um, he could probably get a lot of jobs, right? Just I wonder if he sees any of these as a good fit. You yeah. know, because. You, you could have all this experience and you could hold your own weight and you could go where you want, right? But if, if you're looking at a, posat, a, posat, a spot and it doesn't look that appetizing to you, are you going to take it just because it's a head like a head spot? I wouldn't. You know, you want to find the spot that's right. So I understand. Um, I, I'm intrigued by this. I'm, I'm wondering how much actual ground this breaks and how much of a difference it actually yeah. makes. Yeah, it'd be interesting to know what the process or like – what exactly the committee would be doing in light yeah, of the, the hiring or like where they'd be that. involved. Yeah. So uh, I'm sure more details will arise. 